What are criteria that we find important? Which one is more important? So I picked the first one, and you can actually go through, and I'll let you go through through that one. Um, Let's go through the criteria. Which criteria is more important for you when it comes to the first couple of criteria? Are social, then uh, climate, then we come to social, and then we come to governance criteria. I have, you know, eight to ten. So is being good at the protection of biodiversity more important than being good at hazardous waste management? Again, there is no right or wrong. It's really your opinion, what you believe is the more important factor. And you can actually go down, because I, I'm not going to read them all aloud. Just go down, make up your mind. I'm going to lock the poll afterwards <laughs> when you're finished. And then we can look through what you thought. Uh, is the right, you know, is the right answer. These are the environmental criteria that have been researched by... Um, who did that? Uh, I was not MIT in the next study. I think they got 641 criteria. And you can tell, you know, climate change is one of the criteria, uh, energy consumption, for instance, pollution management. And what is interesting here in that chart, it tells you how important that criteria is, actually, for the ESG rating companies. And I've picked now criteria from here, where I picked one, protection of biodiversity, which is really highly rated, and then I picked one that was not so highly rated by the ESG agencies. And now we can go back and we can look. Always the first one is the one that is highly rated by the ESG um, rating agency. And now let's see how, how much we agree with that. We don't agree, yeah? I have to lock it again. Mm -hmm. We don't agree, yeah? Already. Let's look at the next one. Reduction of emissions. Okay. So we here don't agree. It switched it around, huh? On the next one, here we agree, human rights are more important than uh, rights of indigenous people. We don't agree on uh, community relations worth the promotion of inequality. Uh, next one, we don't agree, privacy and data security. We agree on transparency versus executive compensation, which actually is an interesting uh, topic. Now, the, the point that I want to make here is, on the majority of cases, if I can't correctly, we do not, would not do the same weighting of criteria that official ESG rating agencies do. So how much can we trust them? You know, buying ESG fund, it turns out, they weigh things 180%, you know, differently than we would do. It's just, you know, put on the head. And that's a big problem. So you would, your chart would look different. You would probably be, you know, out here and back in here, you know? And you cannot actually use these consolidated ESG ratings. What is also interesting is something else that you see on this chart. I use this chart to show you the complexity of ESG rating, and this is just uh, the ecology inside. It also tells you the difference from 10 years ago and today. So today, you can already tell ecological aspects are a lot more important than they were, uh, I don't know when year it was exactly, uh, 8 versus 18. So 18 is now, this is the solid line, it's research from this year, and the dotted line was uh, 10 years ago. And the interesting thing is, um, in 2008 it was mainly in environmental policies, while nowadays it's climate change, it's reduced emissions, it's reduced consumption, so it changes. Really interesting. I mean, we, we have 10 years only, and a complete new set of weighting of those criteria, which I think is a huge problem when you invest in an ESG fund. So let's go to the next criteria. These are the social criteria. And uh, you have the same picture. I think also in social criteria you could tell sometimes it's a little bit more than it used to be, but actually it's more probably just a change in, in priorities. In the, on the social side, it was more human capital development. I think that was on the right side. When I, yeah. Development training it was more important in 2008 than after the credit crisis. You know, things like labor management, quality working condition, health and safety, uh, and supply chain management, probably because of the child labor issues and stuff, become more important. So um, we have a huge change, again, also in this, this area, but it's not an improvement of importance. It's more a shift, I guess, from the... 
uh, importance of individual ESG ratings. And finally, governance. That to me looked a little bit more like it used to look. It seems to be pretty similar. I mean, we have some extreme cases which are different, but um, by far and large, it's the attention moved from pay to more, you know, pay was a big concern in 2008, you know, executive pay was a big concern. Now, the big concern is actually corruption and transparency. So, um, this is a problem, you know, basically. We have a different weighting. What should we do? It actually gets worse. It actually gets worse. The ESG ratings who assess this, and that's, just, you know, the ESG rate, you know, rating agents that assess this cannot agree. MIT did a study, and you, you see the result here. So it's, you know, a lot of stuff. What is important is here you have a company, L'Oreal, and you have four different of the leading uh, ESG rating agencies, and they have all really different ratings for the same company. It's really bad. The correlation is 0 0.61, while for credit ratings, it's 0 0.99. And you would assume, you know, these agencies agree, but they actually not agree. That means management has no idea what they should do. There's a rater effect, which means it's a halo, of, sort of a halo effect. If a rater sees something that's really good, it's going to rate other things of the same company higher. They found that as well. They cannot even agree, the rating agencies, on hard facts. If they're a member of the UN Global Compact, um, Thing is something that the rating agencies only agree to 86%. They cannot even agree if it's the CEO and the chair separated. The rating agencies have a correlation of 0 0.56. It's really shocking. And when you look at the best companies, they rated, they looked at 839 companies, and only 26 were in the top 20%. It should be 168 companies. So you could imagine, I mean, this ESG rating is actually something quite confusing. It, it, it looks even worse when you go closer. It's, it's really all over the place. It really is. On top of that, <laughs> the really high-rated agencies are Kingfisher, alcoholic beverages, and tobacco, tobacco, imperial tobacco. It's a really high-rated, you know, by ESG factor. Why is that? I'm going to cover that, that soon as well. Um, it's for them a lot more important as a marketing tool to have a high rating so they comply with as much as possible. So finally, I was actually here already yesterday and I you know, took a picture of something really interesting from a speaker in front of me. From, maybe someone, someone was here yesterday, maybe you remember. There are things that it's really difficult to agree, um, uh, agree on. You know, coal, we all agree, coal is bad. You know, for the time being, we all agree. But I don't entertainment, you know, is that really bad? You know, I mean, some people think it is bad, you know, if you're very religious. But then there are religions where, you know, this topic is a lot less important. And I know there is also a generation, generation change. You know, while my generation was still a little bit conservative, the generation today is a lot more tolerant, you know, think of gay marriage and stuff like that. So, you know, probably not worry if a lot of the entertainment companies in that portfolio, if you go, what was that, Nuclear Energy, I just watched a, a movie on Netflix from Bill Gates. Has anybody seen that? These three movies from Bill Gates on Netflix? Absolutely fascinating. Can, I can highly recommend it. One movie was only about how he reinvents nuclear energy. Um, he created a reactor, probably spent a couple of billions on that, that cannot explode. It's, 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 um, the, can the, the reactors we have today have to be cooled so that they don't explode, so you cool them. And in Koshima, they had the electric generators to generate the energy to cool the nuclear power plant in the basement where the water flew in. So, I mean, of course, you know, the generators could not work anymore, there was no cooling and Fukushima exploded. Bill Gates, somehow, because the technology by, by now is about 30 or 40 years old, there was no development since the 80s, probably since that Long Island, I don't know, what was it called, in, in the States, uh, catastrophe. There's no development in nuclear energy anymore. And he actually developed with scientists uh, a nuclear reactor that when you turn it off, basically when you don't attempt it, it just, it just keeps on generating heat. 
but it doesn't explode. It's, just, it's like a candle, it just burns down, basically. So it's a lot, lot safer. It's also, it also uses fuel uh, that is discarded from today's nuclear reactors. So you can actually reuse the fuel of today's electric generators and, and, uh, and use it to power that new type of generator. I don't know what that new type is going to turn out, but it's actually a lot cleaner than you would think. And it certainly is better than climate change, you know, if you ask me. My mother was one of those atomic atomkraft uh, uh, nine danke Gegner in um, in Switzerland, and I agree with her. I think she's I think she had the sticker on her BMW. <laughs> it's a joke for the whole family, but you know I really admire her for being so proactive. And I was a, 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 I was really until I watched that movie I was against nuclear energy, but nowadays you could debate it. You know, is that really a company you want to exclude? I bought um, I bought the stock um, RWE. <laughs> RW, RWE, it's a German um, energy company, and later I found out that they do still have a lot of, you know, atomic, you know, nuclear energy plants, but they also have a lot of plants for plants for renewable energy. So it's not really a good reason to exclude that. Mm -hmm.